Good morning, I am here with uh, Mr. Jijun Pillai, Vice Chairman, Organizing Committee of Empower India 2020. So, good morning, thank you for uh, morning. being with us here today. Yeah. Can you please tell us a little bit about uh, Wind Power India 2012 and your vision for the event as the Vice Chairman of the Organizing Committee? Okay. Now, Wind Power India is the premier uh, event for wind power development in the country. And wind power in the recent past has acquired very significant importance in the future energy security of the country. Because earlier we all thought that uh, the potential for wind power in India was only around 45,000 megawatt. But new studies have brought out that we could probably develop more than 3 lakh megawatt um, of wind power in India. And it is the most uh, commercialized and viable renewable technology in India today. So. In terms of a transition to a clean energy economy, wind power has assumed a very big significance. So this event is going to highlight wind power's importance in India's energy security and bring together all the stakeholders and, uh, you know, including manufacturers, policy makers, regulators from all over the world uh, to discuss these issues on the same platform. So that's why, and India is, as you know, is the third biggest uh, wind power market in the world today. So uh, there's a lot of global interest also in our wind power sector. So from that point of view, we're holding this international event. You have to look at the sector in an integrated fashion. If you just talk about technology, if you talk about the markets only, that's not enough. Because technology has been there for many decades, so, but it did not grow. So the key actors in the growth in the development of the sector are the policy makers, the regulators, the financiers, and it's a continuous learning process. So you learn from the world a lot. You know, we have brought in so many things from outside India into our policy scenario. For example, this system called Renewable Portfolio Standard. It's a typically American system, but we have brought into India in a very effective way in deciding quantum and, you know, our quota for supply of renewable electricity to the grid. Another thing we have recently introduced a year back is the renewable energy certificates, again which is prevalent in the world. You have been extensively involved in a number of initiatives in the wind industry and the broader renewable energy sector in India in various capacities. Your observation on the growth of the sector and wind energy in particular? I am co quite upbeat about uh, the growth of the renewable sector and wind energy being the leading and most viable and commercialized technology. It would have a lead at least for 10-15 years over other technologies. Why I'm very upbeat is because as I've been talking about for the 12-13 years, we have now after about a decade of arguments and discussions, now there is a large acceptance even within the government that renewables are extremely important for India's future energy sector. One of the main reasons is that the Conventional sector, so you look at a sector like coal, it's going for a serious crisis in terms of supply shortages, in terms of price increases. There are so many constraints emerging in the conventional sector. So all these together, I call it as a convergence of factors which will push renewables to the forefront in the near future. Could you tell us from your experience on what has contributed to the tremendous success of the wind sector with the entire investment coming in from the private sector in India? No, first of all, as I said, it is the most commercialized and viable technology among renewables today. Secondly, it provides steady returns. The returns may not be very high, like, you know, it may not give you 20% returns, but it may give you 16% returns on an assured basis. And electricity is a commodity which you don't have to market. The moment you produce it, it's supplied to the grid. So it's a very assured kind of investment. So private investors have been coming into the sector in a very big way because primarily motivated by two, three factors, the stability, the assured income scenario, and uh, least risk. WISE has undertaken a number of pioneering research initiatives and often been involved in stakeholder consultations. In a recent research paper, WISE had estimated the potential for 50 gigawatts of wind to be installed in India by 2020. Can you please elaborate on what must be done from the policy, regulatory and other stakeholder fronts to make this a reality? At the national level, broadly speaking, we have a good policy framework today. 
but still there are a lot of loopholes to be you know taken care of one of the major things if you ask me is i would talk about financing because india has a high interest uh, you know scenario and debt is very expensive in india and at 13 to 14 percent debt many projects will not work because as i said earlier it's you not know, it's not a very high return sector that way you're talking about 16 percent returns and um, so i would think that there is a case for bringing down the interest maybe through mechanisms like interest subsidies or specialized credit lines dedicated to the sector the reserve bank of india declaring uh, renewables as a priority sector for lending purposes so finance is one issue i would focus uh, to say that you know they need to focus attention for developing this uh, sector it is very interesting you mentioned this sir because in my recent conversation with developers uh, who are developing larger size wind farms relatively in india they have quite often told me that it is easier to find equity than find the debt for these projects uh, yeah. particularly larger size wind farms uh, so do you think uh, one yes the lower debt is important but uh, awareness and reach out to the bankers that we are ready for the next stage and uh, yeah. it is not 1 megawatt and 2 megawatt of wind that they are going to finance but a power project that they have to finance certainly in fact we are trying to involve the bankers also in a big way in the conference there is a lack of awareness but of late if you talk about the last uh, one year or so even the bankers are uh, thinking have changed because if you look at the non performing assets in the banking sector in the infrastructure area a lot of them are conventional power projects you know coal projects many of them have gone into uh, npas so they also have a rethinking process but yes but you go down the line in the banking sector a lot of people still don't understand this so i think a huge awareness generation in the financial and banking sector needs to be done you have recently come out with one of a kind base paper discussing about the possibilities of cooperatives for wind farms in the indian context please elaborate on the same well cooperative uh, experience in india it's quite good we have had huge cooperatives working in various areas you talk about you know textile sector you talk about the sugar sector cooperatives have been very successful so here also especially when you go into you know you are developing new markets like repowering of wind farms for example old wind farms for repowering there because because of the scattered Uh, ownership structure fragmented ownership structure of existing wind turbines uh, cooperative ideas uh, are good for repowering in for the future you know for re redevelopment of the old wind farms that's why we are talking about that there has been a lot of talk about repowering of old wind turbines in india yeah and why has carried out extensive research in this area could you please talk about the opportunities and challenges in this and the framework that needs to exist for this to take off in india no uh, problem is as we were talking earlier the earlier investments were mostly you know in few turbines or single turbines so that has created the older uh, projects are you know fragmented because of the ownership structure now the new ipp pattern is coming in but then frameworks are possible to bring them together in fact wise my institution did a study for the ministry ministry of new and renewable energy to create a new framework for um, facilitating uh, repowering I think the ministry is also aware of these issues but somehow a policy framework has not been put put together yet but I'm hopeful that it will come in the future because the potential is very big you can generate uh, up to 2.5 times the existing capacity uh, if you do go for repowering in those older older you know wind uh, farms a number of global manufacturers have established large manufacturing facilities in India what do you see as the biggest reason for this well india uh, offers cost advantages in terms of labor and other things this is a known factor you know and if you look at uh, for example i always quote the example of the automobile sector in india we still few years back was lagging behind in technology or we were not having good cars produced in the country we were not exporting but today it's a completely different scenario all the global players have been come and established and somehow wind power and automobiles have a lot of uh, similarities in terms of the supply chain requirements both have thousands of components you know being uh, put together in the machines you take a car or a wind turbine it's the same scenario so wind uh, manufacturers now we have a huge manufacturing base set up in the country what we need for the next step 
not just the domestic market. We also need to penetrate the export market, like we have done in the car market, automobile market. But now it's changing, and I think a big market will open up for wind power, and our manufacturers will be exporting more and more to, at least to the Asia-Pacific region. As you see this growing, so do you also see opportunities and uh, situations where uh, R&D centers will be established uh, by the global players in India? We may very soon be addressing the issues in the manufacturing sector. We are planning a study. A uh, very big study, uh, not just uh, wind, we may go into other renewable sources. So looking at the manufacturing sector, you are right, we have the talent pool, we have cost advantages. I again want to go back to the automobile uh, example, because you look at Mercedes-Benz. Today they have their biggest uh, R&D center in India. You know, you are talking about Mercedes employing 400 scientists. So that kind of a thing will probably happen in renewables also. We have good talent. What are the most critical elements and requirements for the large scale-up that is being planned in the wind energy sector over the next five years in India? Well, I would again go back to two, three critical issues which are very important for scaling up. As I said earlier, one is of course financing. Second, of course, uh, there are issues when the wind power uh, induction grows, the in the induction and integration with the grid grows, there could be issues with the grid. So you should look at the grid very closely and that is happening in a small way, grid integration issues, power evacuation issues because most of our sites are in the interior areas and we have not, uh, you know, till now we have not looked at renewable power integration into the grid in a system, systemic manner, you know. But now I am told we have been pushing for a separate cell in the Central Electricity Authority. Now they have created a cell, I understand, for renewable transmission planning. So these are some of the major issues which we have to address. Of course, supply chain and all. I, my general experience is if the market develops, industry is very quick to react because our, our industry, wind industry especially, is quite mature. At least there are four or four players who can react very quickly to the development. So supply chain won't be a problem. Manpower, yes, we may not have people trained in wind power as such, but we have a lot of trained manpower overall and retraining is not a big issue. In the six months of retraining, we can achieve that. So that, that I don't think is not going to be a constraint. As the uh, Indian energy market leads the growth globally, what kind of platform do you think WinPower year 2012 provides? And what do you really see as opportunities and challenges for India to truly become a wind superpower from where we are right now? Well, Wind India is precisely aimed at providing that kind of a platform. If you know that last time, we have almost uh, doubled our exhibition space this time so that we bring in much more uh, you know participants from all over the world. We have country pavilions happening. happening. I think what all of us together, including the government, needs to do to give a big push to the sector is first of all to recognize that wind is going to be a very significant contributor to our power sector in the future. Yes. You have to remove the mental barriers, see that this is the future, then address the issues, as I said, which are critical to integrating wind power into the grid. Issues like uh, grid studies, evacuation planning, dispatching, you know, there are so many such issues, even a smart grid. We may be a little far away from that, but we have to plan for all this to take care of the technical issues which will come. We have to take care of the policy and other issues which will come up because you have to strengthen your utility is. Our utilities uh, today, the financial strength is very bad, so it's affecting the payment uh, scenario, you know, people are not getting payment on time. So a whole lot of things need to be put together if we have to make that huge push to green power. And 50,000 megawatt, which we have projected by 2020, I think we can achieve much more if we plan properly. But somehow the policy scenario is still not addressing some of these things because as you know they have suddenly taken away uh, the accelerated depreciation um, the gbi is still not decided the extension of the gbi but the saving grace probably is the rec market which is developing quite nice in india the rec market can probably push wind in a big way and it's developing quite well so i'm overall hopeful and generally uh, as developing country people, probably we react when uh, there is a crisis. So I am very sure we are moving towards a crisis in the energy sector. And that would be the biggest uh, watershed for mainstreaming renewables. Thank you very much. It was indeed a pleasure to, uh, talking to you. Thank and you. Uh, we look forward to an uh, exciting and uh, knowledgeable three days of the exhibition. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.